Hello and welcome guys this is Rara Likes Games and today I present to you my list of top 10 best CVZ weapons for Albion Online. Now for those of you who don't know what CVZ is, it means Zerg vs Zerg. It is when two large group of players fight against each other. Usually groups of 20 or above people are called Zergs in Albion Online. Now ZVZ usually happens between two large guilds fighting for territory in the black zones or between city factions fighting for outposts in yellow and red zones. Now for these large ZVZs you do need specific gear to be effective as your normal gear will just end up getting you killed within a matter of seconds. And to help you out with these builds I have made this list of some of the best weapons that you can take in these CVZs. Now note that these weapons are not in any particular order and all of them are really good so you can take pretty much any one of them to be really effective in CVZs. Now with all of that out of the way let us move on with this list. Now the first weapon on this list is called Blazing Staff. The Blazing Staff's E ability is called Flame Tornado. You conjure a huge flaming tornado with a 4.5 meter radius at any target position. This tornado lasts for up to 5 seconds and deals damage every 0.5 seconds. If the enemy leaves this area, they take a massive chunk of damage over the next 1 second. This effect also applies after the tornado disappears. Now by itself, blazing stuff is not really that great as people can escape this ability fairly easily. But in a chaotic environment like ZVZs, this ability can be huge. But while using this stuff, you should remember that the flame tornado damage can be reflected. So you should always have something like a cleric robe or a cleric cowl to survive if the enemy uses any kind of reflect. Now next up at number 2 is a weapon that despite many nerfs has stayed strong in the PvP meta in Albion Online and that weapon is the Bloodletter. The Bloodletter's E ability is called Lunging Stab. It is a long range dash in a target direction that deals physical damage to all the enemies it passes through. Now this damage is based on the target's current health, dealing the maximum amount of damage when below 40% HP. If you hit one enemy player that is below 40% HP, you increase your cooldown rate by 90% for the next 1 second. Now this weapon is really good for glass cannon DPS builds but can also be used for bruiser type builds using a hellion jacket as the bulk of its damage comes from its E ability lunging stab which has a huge base damage to begin with. At number 3 is Camlan Mace. Its CE ability is called Vendata. You shoot a shockwave in a straight line, marking the first enemy that it hits. After 1.5 seconds, all the enemies in a 8 meter radius around the marked enemy are pulled in, dealing damage and stunning them. This ability is really good for engaging or following up engages to set up the enemy for taking massive amount of damage from your damage dealers. Next up at number 4 is Damnation Staff and its C ability called Cataclysm. When activated, you curse all the enemies within a 13 meter radius, dealing massive damage over a 5.5 seconds duration and also decreasing their resistances by a lot. Now this ability does have a long cast time, so you do need to be sure that you won't get interrupted during the cast time. But other than that, this ability can have huge impact in any ZVZ. As it has a massive 13 meter radius, it can pretty much hit the entire blob, reducing a massive chunk of their damage resistances. All in all, you do need to position well to use this ability, but when used correctly, this can single-handedly win you an entire ZVZ. At number 5 we have the energy shipper and its E ability is called the divine engine. You shoot a 26 meter long beam in a straight line, piercing through all of the enemies while channeling for 4 seconds. Now note that this channel cannot be interrupted. This beam deals massive damage every 0.3 seconds. It also slowly follows your cursor allowing you to set the direction that you want to use this ability in, allowing you to move the beam. Now as you might have noticed this ability does a lot of damage 
but as you cannot move when this ability is active, you have to position yourself well and time the ability perfectly to deal the maximum amount of damage out of it, which is usually right after your tanks engage as the enemy is usually CC'd for a long duration, so you can get the most damage out of it when the enemy is stunned or rooted. Next up at number 6 is the only healing staff on this list and that is the Fallen Staff. Now the Fallen Staff's E ability is called Salvation. When activated, you create a circle of salvation with a 5.5 meter radius around a targeted position that charges for 2 seconds. Once it is finished charging, it heals up to 10 allies, cleansing all of the crowd control effects and debuffs on them. Now while the healing on this ability is really strong, the cleanse effect makes it even stronger, allowing you to remove any kind of debuffs placed by the enemies on your allies and even freeing them of any crowd control effects. When used properly, you can save all of your allies from certain death. At number 7 is Grail Seeker and its E ability is called Soul Shaker. You slam your staff on the ground along a 20 meter long line in front of you, dealing massive physical damage. This leaves a wall behind for 3.5 seconds. Any enemy that touches this wall gets rooted for the next 3.5 seconds. This ability can be recast again within 3 seconds but doing so increases its cooldown to 31 seconds. At number 8 is a weapon I'm pretty sure all of you are familiar with as it has been the preferred weapon for tanks in CVZs for a very long time, the Grove Keeper. The Grove Keeper's E ability is called Ground Pound. You leap toward a targeted position, becoming immune to crowd control effects and damage until you land. When you land, you stun all the enemies in a 5.5 meter radius for a long duration, dealing massive physical damage and increasing your resistance for the next 6 seconds. Now the damage resistance can stack for up to 3 times based on the number of enemies you hit. Now this weapon is loved by all the tanks because of the great engage it provides and the damage resistance also helps you tank the entire zerg much better. At number 9 is the Hand of Justice and its E ability is called Onslaught. You spin toward a targeted position, spinning your hammer in a 3.5 meter radius for 1 second. You pull up to 10 enemies as you pass through them, stunning them and dealing physical damage every 0.2 seconds. Upon reaching the targeted position, you slam the ground after 0.5 seconds, throwing all the enemies in a 5 meter radius around you in the air for 0.5 seconds and dealing physical damage to them. This ability is really good for setting up the enemies for a lot of damage from your damage dealers. Now at last at number 10 is the Malevolent Locust. The Locust's E ability is called the Void. You summon a bubble in a 2 meter radius that grows for up to 5 meter while channeling for 4 seconds. This bubble cleanses all of the debuffs and crowd control effects on all of the allies within this bubble. It also increases all of their resistances by a lot. Now before the nerf, this ability also had a purge effect for the enemies, but it was later removed as it was too powerful since it could cleanse and purge all at the same time, which could pretty much turn the tide of the battle in an instant. Now this is it for today's video, hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please consider liking and subscribing and if you want to watch my list of top 10 weapons for open world pvp, the link would be in the description down below. And if you have any suggestions on how I can improve my videos, you can leave that in the comment section as well. And again, thanks for watching.